We all know for a fact that cities were designed for cars. With over 4 million miles of roadway, the average American drives over 14,000 miles a year. And let's face it, not having a car in the city can make life challenging. It is much easier to go shopping with a car. It is easier to go to work with a car. If your job is more than 10 miles away, you cannot by any means walk that every single day. While there are even more reasons that a car can provide benefits living in the city, there's also no denying that large cities provide alternate sources of transportation. Many urban areas have their own train or bus systems that can take people downtown or to shopping centers, and these systems can reduce the amount of car usage the average resident uses. These transportation systems can greatly decrease the amount of pollution that cars emit and make urban areas cleaner and healthier. But besides walking, there is another alternative that has not been quickly adopted, and that is biking. There are several reasons why biking in cities has not been widely accepted. As we have talked before, cities in America were made for cars, not bikes. More emphasis is put on building newer highways and streets for getting around cities, and not a lot of attention goes to building bike lanes. Most city departments are forced to build bike lanes only when they see demand for them grow, or there is pressure for areas that have many bicycle fatalities and they have no choice but to add bicycle security. What these departments seem to have missed out on is that by building bicycle lanes, they would encourage riding bikes in cities and increase demand for them. Another major concern for bicyclists is safety. There are over 800 deaths a year of motor incidents with bicyclists and thousands of injuries. Cars are very hostile on roads, and without major protection, riders don't feel safe sharing a lane with cars. People would rather choose to drive to work, even if it is less than 10 miles, than to risk getting killed or injured on major intersections, or careless drivers that are not on the lookout for bicyclists. When exiting their cars, most drivers carefully glance to make sure there are no passing cars, not bikes, and swinging their doors wide open can put a bicyclist's life in danger. Even though there are not many bike lanes in comparison to the millions of miles of car roads, there is no doubt that biking is a great mode of transportation. First of all, bike riding is great for one's health. It is a great way to go outside, enjoy fresh air, and meet up with friends. Additionally, the more people that bike, the less people that are using their cars, and this means less city congestion. This then leads right into the next benefit, and that is saving money. When people don't have to use their cars as much, they save on gas and maintenance. While riding one's bike can create maintenance issue on the bike, they are nowhere near the cost of new car parts. Biking does not consume any fossil fuels, and thus does not emit carbon dioxide, and so it is a very green mode of transportation. Now let's look at different bike lanes and their advantages and disadvantages. The most common and most dangerous bike lanes are ones mixed with traffic. Mixed traffic bikeways are just regular car streets that allow bikes to share lanes with them, regardless of how fast cars can go. In these lanes, bicyclists are in danger of cars trying to overtake them, people getting out of their cars on the side, and just badly park cars. In most cases, riders are forced to hug the shoulder of the road to stay clear of cars. These parts of the road are usually the worst, filled with many potholes, sewer drains, and road debris. The next type of bike lane is called a shared bike lane or a shero. Shero lanes treat bicyclists as equals to cars and lets them drive in the center of the road. On these roads, riders don't have to be close to parked cars, and can take up as much space as they want. Similar to mixed bike lanes, bicyclists are merged with cars and do not offer a lot of protection. The next safest bike lane is what we call just a regular bike lane. These are parts of the road designated specifically for bicyclists and are usually painted for visibility. Cars cannot drive on these lanes, but can merge on them to make a turn. While these lanes don't have physical buffers, drivers are able to clearly see the bike lanes and will have a higher probability of avoiding them and driving in them offering much more protection. Going into an even safer direction are bicycle side paths. These are usually extensions of the sidewalk and are off street. These lanes can be shared with other people who are jogging, running, and walking. There is clear separation from cars and allows bike riders complete protection. Of course, the safest roads with cars for bikes are protected bikeways. These are extensions to the road and provide complete separation from cars using buffers such as bollards or concrete curbs. These are the safest protection for riders as cars cannot merge onto the bike lanes. And of course, the safest roads for bicyclists are bike trails. These are roads exclusively to cyclists and motor vehicles are not permitted on these trails. Unfortunately, even in the best built and protected bike lanes, cyclists face many problems. Cars park in the lanes illegally, delivery trucks stop there to drop off packages, and cars are careless when making turns into the lanes, potentially causing riders to stop abruptly 
or to try to avoid accidents and turn into the curb. Cities can also neglect to make sure these lanes are well taken care of, and many neglected roads have massive cracks and potholes that make them unbearable to ride in. Additionally, to make way for the safest bike lanes, roads must be extended, and this is very expensive for the city. Advocates against bike lanes would rather use that money to maintain existing roads for cars than to tear everything apart to build bigger roads to include bike lanes. But as cities continue to grow, it is time that city planners take bike lanes and bike protection more seriously. Bike riding has become more popular over the years and is not just seen only as a recreational thing, but a lifestyle and a reliable source of transportation. Where people live less than three miles away from their jobs, they could save money biking than driving every day and feel healthier and better from doing so. My focus of this channel is to spread ways that cities and urban areas can be more sustainable and cleaner, and promoting biking is a great way to do just that. We cannot ignore the fact that cyclists don't feel safe on the same roads as cars because of the speed difference, and so protected bike lanes need to be built to create that demand for biking. Cities should not wait for more fatalities and have their hands tied to build these bike lanes, but should do it because it is good for cities and good for their residents. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like my content, please like and subscribe.